Here's your basic DIY dilemma, which may have confronted you. You could be at the local hardware store and you're you know, looking up on the wall at all of these abrasive products and wondering, which one is right for me? There's red and blue and black and brown and does the color make any difference? And what material will do the job best for me? And is the $10 one better than the $5 one? And if so, is it twice as good? So let us crack the kooky code on abrasive products today. This report arises as a consequence of a conversation I was having just the other day, incidentally, with a dude who I won't name, but who in my view should know better. And he opined that, you know, red and blue and brown and black was really just marketing and it was all just visual merchandising of essentially the same crap. And I kind of looked at him and thought, were you asleep that day during that lecture? Because that's not how this rolls at all. And it's important to know, right? It's important to choose the right abrasive product because if you get this wrong, it's not going to perform for you. You're going to waste money. It's going to mean more elbow grease or more wear and tear on the tool and a longer interval in between working hard in your own space and actually experiencing the joy of producing something worthwhile at the end of this process. So let's do that. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, or you can just click the card that I sometimes remember to put uh, up there now, dude. Just to detain you for a moment, if you are a regular viewer, this is an unusual context for me because the part of the fat cave with which you are familiar is just there over your uh, left shoulder, I think. Anyway, it is just over there. And this is the wing of the, fal uh, the fallacial palatial fat cave, which I've been building during the recent lockdown, just upgrading my fabrication slash DIY space. So this is it in all its majesty. And we are going to do a bit more of this stuff on the channel, which would be transitioning people into becoming madmen of metal manipulating mayhem. Yes, and it makes sense to do it here. So this is sort of episode one of that stuff. And I guess the place to start is with the most common abrasive. And it can be in a disc like this. It can be in a disc like this for a bench grinder. Or it can just come in a basic piece of glorified cloth or paper. And it's brown, okay? Mission friggin' brown. This is a steel cutting disc for a five inch angle grinder and it's black on the outside. But if you look down here on the edge, and I'm not sure you can see that from there, but it's the same brown as this. And that's a really easy pro tip next time you're looking at a row of abrasive products. If it's that color, it's aluminium oxide. And aluminium oxide really is kind of the one size fits all affordable abrasive that is kind of ubiquitous, right? And I don't want to shit can it too much because it's actually a very good abrasive. It's quite high performance and it does the job. It's available in all of these grits, so happy days. But it may not be as good as some of the others. It's quite resistant to clogging up, but it does have a little bit of a problem compared with some other abrasives when it comes to wear and tear. See, at a deep sort of microscopic level, when you look at the crystals that make up the abrasive, when that material engages with, I don't know, whatever you might choose to grind, right? As soon as it's rubbing along here, and let us not forget that if you're using an angle grinder, most angle grinders are sort of designed to operate at a peripheral speed of something like 300 kilometers an hour. Okay, so that's pretty fast. Like imagine driving down the road on a car with the wheels locked and no rubber, just steel on concrete or bitumen or something at 300 k's an hour. That's just a normal day in the office for a disc such as this. Okay, so it's a really high performance product, but these basic crystals, as soon as they start doing the job, the edges of the crystals become degraded. They get microchipped and effectively the 
abrasion is reduced. So the aggressivity of the abrasion falls away fairly rapidly with aluminium oxide compared with some of these other grades. Now, when you're looking up on the wall, you're going to see a lot of brown adhesives in most of these subcategories of product, okay? The next thing you're going to see is blue. And blue is emblematic of a different, a different abrasive, sorry, called zirconium, okay? Like it's zirconium oxide, or they just call it zirk, right? It's a different material. It's just crystalline, hard, aggressive, it's an impact abrasive just like aluminium oxide, so it does its job by hitting the material at a deep sort of microscopic level. And you can see with both of these kinds of abrasives, if you use them fast enough, like on an angle grinder, you will see a big rooster tail of sparks, which is emblematic of that impact. You've got a stationary piece of metal, you're hitting it at 300 kilometres an hour with a sharp gouge, it grabs some of that material, it belts it and throws it away, and it generates a lot of heat, and that, hence the sparks, okay? One of the neat tricks about Zerk, okay, is that it self sharpens in a sense, which is to say that when the crystals interact with the work, like they do their impact voodoo at 300 kilometers an hour, the new chips that come off are sufficiently sharp to maintain the same kind of aggressive edge for longer. So that's a pretty neat trick and it means Zerk abrasives last longer and therefore it's three to five times longer too if you use them appropriately. And therefore, if they're substantially more expensive than the brown ones, maybe it's worth it, okay? One of the worst things about Zerk though is it doesn't do a particularly good job dealing with this. And if you're wondering what I mean by this, this is a piece of hot rolled mild steel. It's 10 inches by 10 inches and about eight mil thick. And what they do is they make this in exactly as it's uh, as it as the name suggests. They make it by rolling it really hot. And when it's really hot, it interacts with oxygen very aggressively, chemistry type interaction, and it forms all these oxides. Right? There's oxides of impurities. There's oxides of iron. There's all kinds of things in mill scale, and none of it's good. Mill scale kind of sucks. I mean. Hot rolled mild steel, which is what this surface is. These are two bits of 250 channel, so they're about 100 kilos of, you know, 250 channel here. It's all hot rolled, and for the past couple of weeks, I've been going to war on the mill scale on it. And I've got this one more or less good to go, and I'm about two thirds of the way through this piece just here. And it's a bastard to deal with, and Zerk gets very quickly clogged with mill scale. So if you have a mill scale defeating objective, and that's why you're there staring at the wall, don't buy the blue stuff because it will quickly become glazed over with mill scale because you'll melt it away and then it'll just bond to the material before it gets flung off as a spark. And what you'll feel is for the first, you know, 10 or 12 seconds, It'll be great. And then it'll just glaze over progressively over the next 30 seconds and it'll be as frustrating as all get out after that. Same is true of that kind of uh, paint stripping disc as well, right? They're both zirconium oxide based and they're no good therefore at anything to do with removing mill scale. That's something to remember. Now, you might think that red is just a marketing ploy as well used by Diablo and others. And here's a couple of red discs, right? The thing about red discs is they're ceramic based, which is a different composition as well. Still an impact sort of abrasive, but a different composition and quite aggressive, quite long lasting, self sharpening in the manner of zirconium, but also a little bit sensitive to heat. So I'd have to suggest that if you're building up a lot of heat, like in an industrial process, you tend to do a lot of research on exactly how it's going to go and you put constraints in place to maximise the life of abrasives because they're part of the input cost of the finished product. And you can manage the heat build up in different ways by limiting the pressure that's applied between the ceramic surface and the job. You can quite often do that easily if it's a CNC sort of 
automated process. It's very easy, however, for a DIYer to put one of these ceramic type, uh, this is a Josco 40 grit uh, flap disc, all right? You can put this in your angle grinder and get right into it, but quickly become kind of frustrated with the passage of time and the progress that's being made and then just lean on it a little bit more heavily. And if you do that, you'll build up more heat and ultimately the life of the abrasive product will suffer. So if you are sensitive to that kind of thing operationally and you're prepared to go gently and let the abrasive do the work, then ceramic is going to give you a pretty good return on investment. And the thing I really like about this system okay, is it doesn't matter what the product is. You can instantly tell what the abrasive is and you can select the right one for the job. Aluminium oxide, bit of zerk, bit of ceramic, okay. Long lasting and self sharpening, more expensive, cheaper. So, you know, more general purpose, I'd suggest, for aluminium oxide and more widely available as well. And this goes for any kind of product. Now, there's one more abrasive we need to talk about, and it's the black one, okay? And this is not an arbitrary colour choice either. The black is for silicon carbide. Now, all of these other abrasives, impact style abrasives, okay? Uh, one of the other things about, in particular, uh, the Zerk, is that it's not available really smooth, like I think 120 grit. The way grits work, if you're not familiar with it, is 24 grit and 40 grit, 36 grit. They're really gritty, sort of really scratchy, not fine at all. They're very coarse abrasive, designed to remove lots of material quickly, okay? And then the bigger the number, the finer the grit, okay? And up to about 120, Zerk is fine, but over that it's hard to get finer grits. Ceramic is a bit better at finer grits and so is aluminium oxide. But what's really good at the fine grits is the silicon carbide, right? Black stuff is available from 40 grit, 24 grit, all the way up to, you know, 1200, 2000, 2500 sort of grit, which is sort of really nail buffing stuff if you want to give yourself a manicure at the end of a hard day in the fat cave, right? So the difference between silicon carbide and the other three is that impact versus slicing. This silicon carbide stuff is more like having a plate full of really fine, super sharp, <coughs> excuse me, super sharp knives, right? And this makes a big difference because if you're going to attack, for example, mill scale, okay, ceramic is okay at mill scale, not ideal, but okay. What's really good at mill scale is silicon carbide, okay? Silicon carbide rocks. And it's unfortunate, but the composition of the abrasive is not really written on the product itself. It's ceramic is written on this one. There's nothing at all about the composition of this one. They typically don't say zirconium. They rely on the user to know that blue equals zerk. But what's interesting is that if you want to attack mill scale, you could quite easily just get one of these babies. And that's kind of confusing, I'm sure, because when you look at it, it says concrete, brick, cement. It's a masonry grinding disc. It's a grinding disc because it's thick and it's masonry because silicon carbide is really good at slicing into bricks and stone and tile and things of that nature, okay? And the interesting thing about mill scale, to the extent that it's even vestigially interesting, is that mill scale chemically has more to do, more in common, if you like, with ceramics and rocks and vitrified this and that than it does with metal, okay? So if you want to get into mill scale effectively, you can use one of these masonry type discs because its fundamental constituent is silicon carbide and it'll slice up the uh, mill scale without really getting into the steel. I mean, you have to be a bit judicious and gentle with the tool, but it'll take the mill scale off without really just getting clogged, 
right? And you don't want that because you get one of these, it's going to cost you 10 bucks or eight bucks or something. And if it lasts for 30 seconds before it gets completely clogged, that's a really expensive way to get rid of mill scale, I'd suggest. So that's a pro tip. If you really have to deal with mill scale, a masonry disc will be made of silicon carbide. Just read the back of it, it'll say concrete, brick, masonry, whatever, cement. And that's the ticket for getting rid of mill scale. So essentially, what I want you to come away with from this little presentation is that it's not just marketing fluff. The differences between the abrasives make a big difference to you. Because if you grab one of these babies and you get into some mill scale and you just experience that frustration and hey, we've all been there, you'll be pressing harder and harder on the tool, your angle grinder, right? Now that is whipping around there at 300 Ks an hour. It increases the risk of failure. It increases the risk of jamming somewhere in the job and throwing the tool potentially back at you. And it's just an ineffective way to do this. Your angle grinder is gonna wear out quicker and it's gonna cost you heaps in these just to get a simple job done. Whereas if you pay half the cost, you pick up one of these masonry discs, you'll knock all of that mill scale back in no time by comparison, and then you can get a fairly fine one of these flap discs, and then just go all over the shiny steel with it, and refine your edge and come up with quite a decent surface finish that's amenable to being used as a fabrication surface or being used for, you know, to paint or the finished product is what I'm essentially saying, right? So choosing the right abrasive is easier than you thought and it really is important if you want time to be money or if you want to get that satisfaction at the end of doing the job and not just get stalled on the friggin' grid in the middle.